Yo, 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 what is up, man? It's your boy, Damn D, here to give you the live news. I mean, <laughs> this is not my live news channel. This is Damn D POV. This is Damn D POV. And uh, y'all know how I feel about Stephen A. Smith. There's no secret. But one thing I do appreciate, I appreciate him saying this on his platform. And he gives the details about what these cops were trying to do. They were trying to hide the evidence. They were trying to hide the video. They were trying to hide of what they was doing and giving off false narratives saying that Tyree was uh, resisting and that he was doing this and he was doing that. Most of us know that already. Most of us seen the footage, but for the people who have not seen the footage and don't know the backstory and didn't witness it, uh, the cops were trying to hide the um, body camera by flashing the light into the body camera so um, the camera won't pick up them doing what they did. And Stephen A. Smith is going to uh, explain exactly what went down during the uh, body cam footage that was released a couple of days ago. We brought up the subject of fatherhood a little bit earlier, RC, I think you did, and Tyree has a four-year-old son who will no longer have a father the rest of his life. Stephen A., here we are again, me teeing you up on a tragedy like this. Well, you know, for those that are watching First Take and to um, wonder why we'll tackle a subject like this, we won't spend an inordinate amount of time on it. Uh, because some of it is self-explanatory and we're a sports network, not a news network, but nevertheless, we see athletes constantly having to speak out about some of the heinous things that we witness in our society. And for those that ask the question as to why they feel compelled to do so, it's because of where they come from and who they go home to. And when you look at the modern day black athlete, the John Morants of the world and various others who obviously have and will continue to speak out against these heinous acts, Time and time again, we find ourselves regurgitating the same thing. This situation is slightly different because the perpetrators with five black police officers, um, Reverend Al Sharpton, whether you agree or disagree with him. Why would he bring up Al Sharpton? <laughs> out, of, out, of, uh, out of all the people he could have agreed with and brought up Al Sharpton. <laughs> In most instances, I believe articulated it accurately when he called these officers a disgrace to our race and a disgrace to humanity. And it needs to be said. Their names, Tadarius Bean, Demetrius I'm hungry, I'm Hill, sorry. <laughs> Desmond Mills Jr., Emmett Martin III, and Justin Smith, all five cops, all black, played a role mm -hmm. as the body cams tried to disguise. Mm -hmm. I want to remind people of what happened here. So, this is the part where Stephen A. talks about what the cops were trying to do. They were screaming at Tyree Nichols to put his hands behind his back while the visual of the body cam was blocked. They had already had him restrained. While two officers held him down, another officer winded up as if he was kicking a field goal and kicked him in the face twice. Most of us already know that, but for the people that didn't see the footage, because I know everybody don't want to see that footage. That footage was very hard to watch, especially the part when, you know, he was screaming out for his mother, not knowing that he was three, what, three blocks down away from his mother house. Another officer came when they sat him up restrained and hit him with a baton at least twice. Then they stood him up, all 150 pounds of him, while all of those officers were considerably bigger. Then they stood him up and punched him in the face at least two or three times. He was already done. And the only reason we saw that was because of a surveillance camera overhead across the street that the officers did not know was filming them. They tried to hide what they were doing and literally fake that he was resisting while they were beating him to death. So when we look at that, it ain't about black and white anymore. It's about blue. 
Clearly, there's something going on, which we've lamented as a community on many occasions, where black men are depicted and displayed and disseminated to the masses in such a way that these kind of things seem to happen strictly to us who are unarmed while other folks are shooting at cops, resisting arrest, killing people, and they get arrested. Excellent. This is what happened. Excellent. And so I'll just close by saying, we stand with John Morant, we stand with each other. We understand that no matter what people talk about and what people say and what times we're supposed to live in and how much things purportedly have improved, <clears throat> that when it comes to black men, we have been treated differently. This is the latest example of that. And unfortunately, yet another funeral is scheduled to take place because of it. These officers. Now, y'all know half of the time, 98% of the time, I don't agree with Stephen A. Smith. But every dog has his day. He was 100% right on everything that he said, especially how these five officers were, were trying to hide what they were doing. And the, and the only way that we knew is that because another camera from another angle captured it. Otherwise, we wouldn't have, I mean, we seen some of it, but we didn't get all of it because they were trying to hide what they were doing. Um, unfortunate situation, man. Unfortunate situation. So we all know how I feel about Stephen A. Smith, but, you know, I do appreciate him going on first take and saying the things that he said about these officers how they were trying to hide and try to cover up. But I just wish Stephen A would keep the same energy when, you know, his white friends are in question. I'll leave a comment down below. <laughs>